I would like to um, ask some question to the artificial intelligence because uh, it's quite interesting to see how this uh, GPT chats would answer without any emotions. And we asked it about how can the authorities reduce risk related to migrants while not violating human rights. So here the answer that we have from uh, GPT chat, reducing risk um, associated associated with migrants while uh, respecting and protecting their rights is a complex challenge uh, that requires a balanced approach and cooperation between various stakeholders. Here are some uh, strategies uh, that authorities can consider. First, improved border security. Strengthen border security measures to prevent human trafficking and smuggling while also uh, respecting the rights of individuals seeking asylum or legal migration. Is it possible in this situation? But I think that, you know, artificial intelligence will save us. It's a very clever, you know, answer. And it's, yeah, it, it's very intelligent in his absolutely, answers, absolutely. answers, yes. Absolutely. It's hard, you know, to propose such a you know, statement. <laughs> So you think that uh, this improving border security is quite difficult in this situation, especially for the individuals seeking asylum you know, or legal migration I, from Russia? Of course, I, I think that, you know, the simple, simplest way is probably just to close the borders for flow of people, goods, services and capital. It's just complete isolation. A certain acceptation can be, of course, uh, considered such a humanitarian actions or political actions, but the mechanism should be should be should be devised by people knowledgeable about about military threats. For me, the, the matter is quite simple. Ukraine is fighting for its freedom and for ours. So we, we have, as I said, we have chosen to stand with Ukraine, and we shouldn't speak. I, I would say so-called rotten compromise including the, the, the matter of border, of opening borders for Russia. No, it must be very, you know, hard on that. So no compromise. We cannot, you know, discuss, we cannot try to make a compromise with, with aggressor. I accept your position, but still I want to add some more proposition from GPT chat and we'll go sure. further. So monitoring and an evaluation, establish mechanisms for monitoring and evaluation migration policies to ensure they are effective, fair and respect human rights. This may involve uh, engaging independent human rights organizations to assess the situation. So is this a compromise? No. From, from your point of view, I, I, I can answer for you, no. <laughs> no it's, it's, it's a great, you know, advice. It's great advice. <laughs> okay, so I propose to um, discuss one more option about the situation uh, on the Georgian border in this case. One and uh, three, 1.3 million Russians have already crossed the Georgian border. About uh, 300,000 of them remain in the country. Uh, the representative of the United Nations movement in Georgia, Nona Mamulashvili, said that the influx of Russians uh, fleeing to Georgia from mobilization uh, remains a significant problem for this country. Almost 70 percent, uh, um, I'm sorry, of survive, survived uh, citizens are worried about the mass um, arrival of Russians in the country. People fear the negative consequences of the migration. According to her, the fact that Russians come as refugees to a country those whose territory is occupied is an oxymoron. Um, the creeping situation of the creeping occupation, as I call it, of Georgia continues. And in this case, what can be expected if uh, the Georgian government does not respond? And how many years will it take to return to the status of Georgia uh, of 2007, for example, before the second war that annexed 10 percent of more territory of Georgia? I think, you know, the situation you just described, you know, showing that, that such, you know, influx of people pose a real threat to, 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 to countries like Georgia. Uh, because you cannot exclude that, you know, these people who 
uh, just you know fleeing for Russia now for many reasons. One day they will become you know uh, let's say active agent, you know working for, for, for Russia government. So actually it could uh, you know it could it could destabilize it, 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 this, this country. So so I think it's not the, the good question, the good answer to this question. Maybe we should you know ask our, our, our artificial intelligence uh, what what kind of advice they would uh, to offer us. We can cannot do it so fast uh, because we should okay. uh, uh, form, I know, I know. form very uh, uh, correctly the question. So I better yeah. ask you one more thing from your observation outside the country, I mean Georgia. What is the future of Georgia might be with this current governmental policy? How do you think? You know, I think that the... Uh, the, the, the Georgia government should, you know, run more, let's say, I would say more, a more cautious policy, you know, because uh, such, you know, huge opening the borders can create a kind of problem which cannot be, you know, reversed. And so I would advise be more and more cautious about these immigrants. And but, but, but as a general answer to your question is, I think uh, I dream Georgia, like your country, one day should be the member of, you know, uh, independent democratic way, both in terms of European Union and, and NATO. I know it's a long way, but I think there's no other way. So I really keep my finger, you know, uh, crossed for, for, for success your country and other countries like Georgia. You know, we choose Georgia, chose Georgia in this uh, ex as an example because uh, it's uh, very obvious uh, that uh, this uh, governmental policy looks more uh, short-sighted and not uh, uh, strategic uh, for the future of Georgia. Yeah. And it's understandable, especially because Georgia is occupied by Russia. 20% of this uh, uh, territory is occupied by Russians. And it's a good example how a country made step back uh, from the future that people uh, together, I mean, mutually uh, b b have been building during all these years. And um, in this, um, just to uh, resume our conversation, I want to ask what uh, um, more examples you might uh, um, uh, mention now um, from the Western countries. I mean, the politicians that are short sightening right now with Russia and still playing games and have a lot of risks to have such problems as Georgia's, Georgians. Mm -hmm. So just you know, try to you know, to, to, if, if I if I understood you correctly, your question was about you know other Western countries which uh, Eastern you know, let's Europe. Say, okay, let's say Eastern, Eastern European countries. Yes. Ah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. I think that you know there are some countries in our region, like you know Hungary, for example, mm -hmm. showing I would say a strong sympathy towards Russia. You know, I can imagine that. I, I you know I have a lot of friends there, and I know that there are a lot of people who will not share, let's say, this this, this optimism uh, that the, the, the Hungarian government towards to Russia. But unfortunately, it, it's happening. It's, it's really different, but also uh, to some extent, uh, I think that we also should point out you know, Slovakia. I know the government is taking a, respons is a more responsible position, but there are, you know, there are some people which actually, you know, say Russia is, is fine, you know, and there are a lot of, let's say, sentiment, uh, resentment saying that, you know, let's get back to the old times because it was a great time. So it's something which surprised me. And unfortunately, uh, I, I, must, yeah, I must admit, I must agree with you. Such, Strange things is happening around us.